Yeah. Sweet. Just as the rain starts getting heavier. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, sweet. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video here on the channel and welcome to the third day of winter here in New Zealand. Um, absolutely pissing down. Um, so we thought it'd be a good day to do a bit of a bike check on my bike. Yeah, if you haven't seen um, our latest video, giving you guys a bit of an update on what's happening, I'm going to Austria and this is the bike that I'll be taking with me and riding there for three months. You might have seen the video of me building this bike when it was brand new, um, so if you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. Um, but a couple of things have changed on it. I've um, done a couple wee tweaks and a couple wee upgrades since that video. Um, so now it is pretty much at dream spec and I'm going to be just running you through those final little details of it. And I'm hanging out here in case you <laughs> <he> forget something. <laughs> Which will most likely will happen. Yeah, probably. Finn ordered himself and I a title stem each, which is really cool. They look super nice. He got the black one, I got the chrome one just there. Um, super stoked with how the chrome one works with this bike. And I was also really curious to try out the one up um, carbon handlebars. So I've got those uh, paired onto the stem. I uh, trialed a bit of bar width with the common cell stock bars. Um, they came 780. Uh, I just wanted to see what a bit narrower would feel like. I cut them down to 770. They actually felt quite a lot better. Um, being able to corner a bit better and um, move the bike a bit easier in the air uh, when you're jumping made quite a big difference. Um, so I, once I got these bars, they came 800. I cut them down to the same, to 770. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. That's what I'll, I'll be running for probably quite a while now. The shock, yes. So I built the shock with a... Oh, I built the shock with a bike. <laughs> built the bike with a Fox Factory Float X shock, um, which is kind of like their trail slash enduro shock, uh, which was really good. Um, I had no problems with it. However, when I was sort of thinking of what I ideally wanted with this bike, um, I did have the Float X2 in mind, but there was just none in stock. I saw this one on Facebook Marketplace, brand new, and I thought, considering there's no stock anywhere else, I just had to get it. So, got the shock, installed it, and it's actually surprisingly very different. Very, very different. Um, way harder and more complicated to tune but once it was tuned it just felt insane it felt like just the best of the best of every kind of shock that's that's out there um, super planted super playful super supportive um, and it sounds nice and squishy <laughs> so the the bike came with just a basic 150 mil dropper and a pretty hard saddle a physique saddle so I swapped that out as well. So I've gone with a 170mm Bontrager dropper post. So they come for the wider 34.9mm uh, seat tubes. The, uh, the actual stanchion part of the, the dropper is wider as well. So it's a lot stiffer, it's pretty silent. There's hardly any side to side play. Um, and I just get that extra 20mm drop. And I also got the WTB Volt saddle which is by far the best saddle I've ever ridden. Um, and I think if any of you guys are having saddle issues or feel like your saddle's pretty uncomfortable, then I highly recommend trying this one. Um, I promise you it'll feel so much better. Why do you have a dissector on there? So the same thing as you've probably noticed, um, white Maxxis logo on the back, yellow on the front. So this is the OEM tire. I did actually have a DHR2 ready for the build of the bike, but I had never ridden the Dissector before. It was kind of still summer when I built the bike, so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna give this tire a try first. Um, I actually have a warranty rear wheel coming as well, so I thought, I'm just gonna save the DHR to put on the new wheel, and I'm gonna run this combo um, and just to see to see what it's like. 
the warranty is nothing major, it's just a hub issue. Just a hub issue, it's, it's nothing major at all. That's why I'm still running this wheel, because it's, it's, it's fine. Um, Which just says good things about Bontrager's warranty, yeah. that they're willing oh, to they're send insane. you a new wheel. They're really good, really, really help you out. Yeah, the pedals, pedals are, pedals are sick. Um, this is the first time I've properly ridden clip pedals. Uh, the whole rest of my, my riding life I've just been on flats. Um, so it was a pretty significant change. I noticed a lot of differences, um, pros and cons. Obviously, the cons, yeah, oh, sorry, the pros, they're pretty obvious. Um, you know, you just are planted on the bike, you don't have to worry about foot placement, you can ride through rough stuff and your feet don't bump off the pedals. Coming out of corners as well, it's just so much easier to put down power coming out of corners and just keep the flow going on maybe less flowy trails. However, I did notice that sort of subconsciously it made me want to push less and, you know, it may, I sort of would hold back through the corners um, and even in jumps, there are a couple of times, granted I have set them up pretty loose um, to unclip, but, you know, unclipping in the air, trying to throw a bit of a whip or something like that has made me ride a bit more cautious. So when I do go to Austria, I am actually going to take both sets of pedals um, and, and both shoes. So I think, because I think I can just be a bit sort of more, I can feel a bit more free with the flat pedals. So for, for bike park laps, I think they might be the go-to. What about um, the, uh, the 38 versus your old Lyric Ultimate? I'm sure everyone's interested oh, in that. Yeah, well, I mean, that's night and day. Um, I think the biggest difference that I noticed was how much more supportive the 38 was. Um, it's been it's been riding awesomely. Um, the ability to tune independent high and low speed rebound and high and low speed compression um, is, is just awesome. You know, you can slow down the high speed rebound so under a big hit, it will it will not you know bounce you straight back off the bike, but it still handles the uh, the braking bumps and the roots really really well. Um, stiffness is yeah very very noticeable especially compared to the old old lyric um, can't you know. speak for the new rock shock stuff that would yeah be interesting to compare yeah the what new the brand new rock shock stuff looks pretty interesting even the lyric um, itself you know looking a bit stiffer is probably a good option i mean yeah to be fair i probably am a bit over forked um i'm a pretty Skinny dude, no, no. <laughs> the, st <laughs> the, uh, the stanchions are like thicker than my wrist, so <laughs> you know, you can see which is going to break first there. <laughs> one more thing, um, which if you're looking into buying one of these bikes maybe you might find quite interesting is the bottle cage and the adapter that I've had to mount to use it. So the bottle cage um, bolts on the frame are actually quite high. Um, so this bottle cage is using an adapter, a toe peak adapter, which is making it sit about 30 mil lower. Um, so I tried it without that, and even the small Camelback bottles still hit the uh, the top of the shock here. Um, you know, by a long shot. I think even this is a medium sized frame. I think even on the large sized frames, it does the same. But I got the little adapter. You can see it's sitting a lot lower now, and pretty much all bottles will fit in there. So stoked on that, but that's something you'll have to consider if you're looking into this because it doesn't work, especially on the medium frame without the adapter. At the moment, I'm not running any inserts. I don't really actually think you need inserts for the kind of rotorua riding that we do. However, I do have a spare cush core from the last bike and I will definitely put this, that in, in this wheel before going to all the rocks overseas because um, I do not want to be blowing up this wheel <laughs> in terms of weight of the bike, she's pretty heavy, especially once that cushion core goes in, she'll be sitting at about 16.3 kilograms. Um, so that is 1.5 kgs heavier than the Kona, my last bike, and it is noticeable. Um, but once again, even with that, it comes with its own pros and cons. The bike feels way more planted. Um, and it feels like nothing can put it offline riding the rough stuff, um, which is awesome. So yeah, thanks for watching. You guys will see this very shortly um, from the point of view of the GoPro of my chest, um, hopefully riding in Austria somewhere.